ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Intrepid Sea, Air and Space Museum. I am Stuart McNeil, an educator here at the museum, and today I'm going to give you a, a little show inside of our planetarium. So, this show is called Biome Away From Home, and we're going to explore some of the things that make Earth special for life and see if we can find them anywhere else in outer space. Now, as you can see over here, we are starting out our show on Earth. And while this is a lovely place to think about what makes Earth special and a great place for life to exist, I want to take us off the surface here. So now we'll zoom out into Earth's orbit, and from this view we can get a really great view of all the things that make Earth the perfect place for life. We can see massive bodies of water, liquid water, very important for life wispy clouds indicating that we have a nice thick atmosphere and of course if we all take a deep breath right now we know that our atmosphere has a very oxygen rich content that's stuff that's going to allow us to breathe but there's other things that we can see from this distance out in fact let me turn on a visualization of our magnetic field now what you can see here this big blue jellyfish looking thing is Earth's magnetic field, a powerful force field of electromagnetism that extends out in every direction from Earth's poles. And we can see here that's literally being blown back by something. It's being blown back by the sun's solar wind, a stream of charged particles that are pushing against these electromagnetic waves. It extends about five Earths ahead of Earth and then more than a hundred behind. And without this magnetic field, there's a good chance that the solar wind would wear away our atmosphere, leaving Earth a dry, lifeless husk. But there's something else that we really can't see unless we get even further away. So now we'll go up above our solar system and get a nice view of the orbit of the inner planets. And we can see from this view I have Earth's orbit highlighted in gold, and that's very important. Earth is situated about 93 million miles away from the sun, about 150 million kilometers, and we call this oftentimes the Goldilocks zone, or the habitable zone. It's a perfect little spot from our star that allows a planet to have liquid water on its surface given the right atmosphere. It's not too hot and not too cold. So, with all of these factors added together, our distance from, the, distance from the sun, atmosphere content, oxygen, comfortable temperatures, magnetic field, and liquid water, Earth is a really wonderful place to live. But we can take a look at some other places. For instance, Mars. Mars is our next target for human exploration. But is it a good place for life? Well, we can investigate that now. So here we are flying into Mars, and you might have noticed from the view of the habitable zone, it's not inside of the habitable zone, it's just outside. And indeed, as we fly in, we can see that there's no big oceans, no rivers, no lakes, no known liquid water on the surface. And now, that's partially due to the fact that Mars has virtually no atmosphere to speak of. It's very, very thin compared to Earth's. Uh, pressure on Earth is about 14.7 pounds per square inch. On Mars, it is about 0 0.087 pounds per square inch, so extremely thin. And that atmosphere is 95% carbon dioxide, most almost entirely carbon dioxide. So Mars is not looking too hospitable. Then there's the temperature. Without that atmosphere, temperatures can vary widely across the planet. On the equator in the summer, temperatures can rise up to about 70 degrees Fahrenheit, about 20 degrees C. But at night, those temperatures are going to plummet to negative 100 degrees Fahrenheit or negative 73-ish degrees Celsius. So crazy temperature changes. And last but not least, without an atmosphere and no magnetic field to speak of, Mars is bathed in radiation. So any humans exploring this planet in the future will need to protect themselves by either living in specially designed habitats or even underground. 
and any adventures on Martian surface will definitely require spacesuits. So Mars is perhaps not the most habitable place. It's going to take a lot of work for us to live there. But speaking of life, is there any place where there could be life already? Well, that's something else that we want to explore. And if we're going to go looking for life in outer space, we need to open our minds about where we're looking. Perhaps not just on planets, but on moons. Moons are a great target for life, somewhere or somewhere to look. As we fly away from Mars now, we're going to go deeper out into our solar system. We're going to go visit Jupiter and see one of its 67 known moons. We're going to go to the uh, one of the four largest ones. It's a Galilean moon called Europa. And as we come into Europa, it's going to look like a strange world, one that maybe shouldn't be able to support life, as you'll be able to see here in just a moment. Yes, there it is. Europa is an ice ball. A large world covered in a solid sheet of ice. We can see those tiger stripe cracks in it, the lineae, all over the surface. But there is some thought that there is more water on Europa than there is in every ocean, lake, and river on Earth. That water is underneath this icy surface, and there's evidence to suggest it. For instance, the Hubble Space Telescope was able to observe geysers. They're the little puffy things that you can see sticking out from the South Pole of, uh, of Europa right there, spewing liquid water more than 125 miles, about 200 kilometers, into space. These geysers are fed by energy from Europa's core and uh, tidal heating and tidal pressures from Jupiter. Anywhere we find water on Earth, liquid water on Earth, we find life. And Europa isn't alone in being one of these ocean worlds. There's a moon of Saturn called Enceladus. And the Cassini orbiter, in orbit around Saturn, return these amazing images of geysers underneath the South Pole of Enceladus. It even flew through them, collecting samples of that liquid water, and was able to find organic molecules, the building blocks of life, in that water. Carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, ammonia, and even uh, molecular hydrogen. Really important stuff for life to take hold. But if there's one place, one moon of Saturn that's really truly weird. It's the moon Titan. Now, if life exists on Titan, it would have to be extremely hardy and unlike anything we've ever seen. But Titan has some interesting qualities that might make it worth investigating. And we're going to go see some of those right now. Now, Titan is a very strange alien world. It's the second largest moon in our solar system. It's actually bigger than the planet Mercury, but it has something that no moon has, and that is an atmosphere. Yeah, this big old uh, basketball here that we're in orbit around are the tops of Titan's clouds. Titan has an extremely thick atmosphere, actually thicker atmosphere than we have here on Earth. But its atmosphere is not very pleasant for human beings. It's made almost entirely of methane. Now, Titan is also the farthest object that we human beings have ever landed a craft on. In 2005, that Cassini orbiter I mentioned actually dropped the Huygens probe down to the surface. And the Huygens probe returned images of a truly alien world, a place with mountains and sand dunes and even lakes and rivers of liquid methane. If there's anything that can survive on the Titan surface, it would be unlike any life that we find here on Earth. Not only would it have to have adapted in a uh, methane environment, but 
it also would have to deal with temperatures that average negative 290 degrees Fahrenheit or 179 degrees below zero Celsius. That's extremely cold. And so that's about it for our search in our solar system. There's some conjecture as to whether or not bacteria could survive in the cloud tops of Venus or Jupiter. But in, other, in places that we can look to and visit, those are some of our best candidates. But what about places not in our solar system, planets that don't orbit our sun? We refer to these as extrasolar planets. And as of 2000, January of this year, there are more than 3,000 confirmed planets orbiting other stars. So if we can't find life here in our solar system other than on Earth, there is a myriad of possibilities out there in outer space. This is just a small portion of this amazing universe, and we can keep looking and keep exploring. So thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed this little trip through outer space and be sure to come visit the planetarium anytime here at the Intrepid Sea, Air and Space Museum. Thank you for joining me. I'm Stuart McNeil.